There is a lot of chaos about COVID-19, its origin, nature, whether it is a biological weapon or a leak from Wuhan lab. But there is certainly a growing consensus across the globe that the BTWC, Biological and Toxin Weapons Convention, should be strengthened to protect the world from such catastrophic happenings. The world today is aware of mass destructive weapons, MDW, which have caused mayhem across the globe, namely chemical weapons, biological weapons and nuclear weapons. Since the first use of nuclear weapons on Hiroshima and Nagasaki 75 years ago, there has been a growing concern about the global security from these MDWs. One of the measures taken to curb the use of these weapons includes the NPT, Non-Proliferation Treaty. But is the world safe today from nuclear weapons? What are the insights of NPT? What lessons should global leaders take from the trajectory of NPT? Considering the nature of biological weapons, what caution should the global leaders factor in while strengthening the BTWC by amending it for global biosecurity? Is this the correct time for such a discussion? Also, what is the status and role of India in all this? Jyot presents an interpretive view by Jain Acharya Yugbhushan Suri in this World Order series, Part 1. The Non-Proliferation Treaty was signed on 1st July 1968. India was indeed aware of the discriminative nature of the treaty and as a result, India had decided not to be its signatory. And till today, she has maintained the same policy. If we view the course of NPT, it has majorly functioned to restrict nuclear development for have-not nations and has been used on multiple occasions against India as a tool to arm twist India and her interests. If we neutrally view this treaty, it has not realized its real objective of disarmament by the nuclear weapon states. As enumerated in Article 6 of the treaty, it says, each of the parties to the treaty undertakes to pursue negotiations in good faith on effective measures relating to cessation of the nuclear arms race at an early date and to nuclear disarmament and on a treaty on general and complete disarmament under strict and effective international control. Though reports show that nuclear powers have moved towards disarmament by reducing the number of warheads, in reality, they have upgraded the lethality of nuclear weapons with advanced technology. The reduction of warheads, which is widely visible, is more because of obsolescence and not for disarmament. Even today, thousands of decommissioned warheads have not been dismantled. In fact, they have developed swifter and highly sophisticated delivery systems, some even with automation powered by AI. As for India, Though not a signatory to NPT, she has continuously adhered to the principles of non-proliferation. Unlike other nuclear powers, she has indigenously developed nuclear technology without any support from any nuclear power and has never shared any technological know-how with other states to manufacture weapons of mass destruction. She is one of the only two countries in the world to adopt a policy of no first use whereas none of the other nuclear powers has declared any assurance in this form. Thus, till today, even after 75 years of Hiroshima and Nagasaki nuclear bombardment and 52 years of NPT, the world feels insecure from the threat of nuclear war. If the strengthening process for the Biological and Toxin Weapons Convention follows the same trajectory as NPT, this convention would also be a hollow promise without any significant achievement. It would be worth observing here that nuclear weapons are mostly beyond the capacity of smaller nations to procure, maintain, use and manage. But the bioweapons by their very nature are inexpensive, easy to develop, store, maintain, transport and use allowing even small rogue states and faceless terror groups to own them, calling for higher precautions in the convention.
The nature of bioweapons is such that its attack can affect en masse with uncontrolled contagion, resulting in devastation multiple times greater than nuclear weapons. Therefore, the text of the amendment should set in place neutral, transparent, equal, robust institutions for enforcement, implementation, execution and verification processes. The convention should not have any saving clause affording prerogative and privilege to any nation and should enforce upon all signatories the prohibitory clauses strictly and stringently. It must be ensured that the convention does not leave any loopholes in the name of research and or medicinal purposes etc. The very genesis of multiple pandemics faced by humanity in the past century is in wildlife contact. And the only solution as prescribed by the Save Humanity campaign is wildlife distancing in all forms. Extermination of wildlife as suggested by some to save humanity and eliminate threats of future pandemics is not a robust solution since it will lead to a biological imbalance. It is a well-established fact that the existence of humanity is completely dependent on the diverse bio-world. Hence, it is advised to amend BTWC. This is the right and prime time for India to propagate the idea of global biosecurity through wildlife distancing. The enforcement of wildlife distancing upon the global citizenry via BTWC will ensure the avoidance of such a pandemic in the future. Today, India is considered a major player in the global political landscape with an influence to drive decisions in a particular direction. Also, today's global political temper and India's geographic positioning may act as a catalyst for India's endeavor to propagate this idea of wildlife distancing as a precursor to amend the convention in the ninth review conference slated for 2021. As a step in this direction, External Affairs Minister Dr. S. J. Shankar has rightly set India's priority at UNSC of reforming multilateral organizations to iron out unevenness in power sharing. While moving in this direction, considering historical injustice, developing countries might need affirmative actions and privileges from developed countries to make up for historical losses, uplift them to stand at equal levels and benefit equally from multilateral organizations. We will hear more about this in the upcoming parts. As Dr. Henry Kissinger envisioned at the onset of the pandemic that the world will no longer be the same. And recently, External Affairs Minister Dr. S. J. Shankar reiterated the same in the AINTT address, which we can very well observe that in reality, the world order is changing in a big way. Stay tuned with Jodh to know more about the world order through the lens of Jainacharya Yugpushan Suri.